So in week one, we talked about growing in faith as a family, which yep. was incredible. And this week, we are talking about the waiting season. Waiting season. About Ooh. how to gain strength and courage while I wait. Say, while I wait. While I wait. wait. That is so important because we all walk through those seasons and they are challenging. Amen? You can raise your hand if you've ever been through a waiting season. Y'all are in a waiting season. Come on, we're a transparent church. Yeah. Okay. Man, thanks yeah. for your transparency. Yeah. They are such an important part of our faith, and they are such an important part of how we develop in relationship with the Lord, and we also walk through these things while we are in relationships or while we are waiting on relationships. So we have two of our dear friends that are here to um, really, really share with us some of the wisdom that God has imparted to them. Yes. You, can, you can obviously gain and understand that they have many, many successes, right? So the God be the glory. They have they have been successful in lots of areas. But would you share with our family here just about some of your experiences in your personal lives in the waiting seasons? Yeah. Um, so so excited about this opportunity. My wife and I have walked through three major, very intense faith seasons, and the faith seasons were multiple years of believing for a promise for God. How many people in here? God has given you a promise. He's given you a business. He's given you an idea. He's given you a, a word that says you're going to be in a relationship. You're going to be married. And we went through years and years and years of waiting for these three things. One of them was our amazing son Asher, who was over. Over there, I think we'll bring him out later. We'll bring him out. Yeah, <laughs> he, he can only make one service today because uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is it. So. This is it. <laughs> it's true. But we also were graced to partner with a franchise and open a franchise store called the Athlete's Foot. All right. And so you um, guys always had heat on the feet. Yeah, you always had I mean, heat on the feet. Look at you, man. This carpet is on fire. Listen, bro. stop that. I mean, guys, let's stop. <laughs> All right, that's not what we're doing. Let's stop. Keep going. Go ahead. Go ahead, Kenny. And the third, um, we, we pastor an amazing church in Spartanburg called The Purpose Place, and it's been three years now. This is a mantra that God kind of given us, and you'll see this recurring theme all day today. And for my note takers, you can write this down. It's not personal, it's purpose. That's good. And so let me unpack it just a little bit real quickly. Um, God gave us a word at the beginning, and we walk through this season of waiting, this season of disappointment, this season of it didn't happen, this season of I thought it was now and it's not now, I thought it was now and it's later, these seasons of letdowns according to our timeline. And what we found is that God was teaching us it's not personal, it's purpose. What that means that it's not about us. It's always going to be about him. And he's saying, do you trust me enough? Do you trust my word enough? Because the thing he taught us was that he's never going to change his mind. But he will change ours. That's good. And what does that mean? What, what, what's your posture? Or more frankly, what's your perspective on this? God, give me your perspective. God, what are you doing during this waiting? And so we spent our waiting season being trained to always seek God's perspective. And you guys talked about his timing, and you're going to unpack some of the yeah. seasons you went through, but you said a line that I, I can't unhear it. Like, it stuck <laughs> to me, uh, and it's that his timing is his kindness. Yeah. And I preached here for a while about how if we rush it, we'll ruin it. Because if we don't pause, pray, and we're not patient, you'll try to kick down doors. You'll try to make things happen in your own strength. So here's a loaded question. Are you trying to rush it or rush him, or are you trusting him? Because if his timing is his kindness, then he'll unfold his purpose and his plan. So keep going. This is good. Well, <laughs> um, I really lived out his timing being his kindness, right? I um. I, I was a musician for a long time, right? And early in my musical career... still a musician. Um, <laughs> I, I don't get a chance to play as often. Um, but I, I really, 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 really wanted to go on the road and tour, and I was ready, and I could play, and got it open a couple of doors, but not quite yet. And this one major tour came up, and they called... Literally, like my homeboy, I got on the gig, and everybody. How many people ever been there? Where it's like, God, you doing it for everybody else? You just gonna bless everybody else right here in front of me, and you promised me this. <laughs> <laughs> and what happened was, he got the call to do this, and I didn't. And I sat on the couch, and I was 
broken. And it was at that moment that I surrendered and I said, God, whatever it is you want from me, it's about you. If whatever it is that you need from me, it's about you. And if you want me to go on the road, cool. If not, cool. And I learned that it's always going to be about us pursuing him and not the thing. And at the moment, check this out. The moment that I was broke, literally did not care anymore. Anybody ever been like, you know what? I don't even care if you do it anymore. I'm, I'm tired of believing for it. I'm tired of hoping for it. This is unfiltered, right? So we can keep it real yeah, in here, yeah. right? Y'all talk to me. Um, That moment, the floodgates opened up. Literally a week later, I went on tour with, uh, y'all don't judge me, I went on tour, my very first uh, major tour was with an R&B band called Jodeci. Oh, come on. And so I went on my first tour, pray for me. Is that all my life? Well, that's Casey and JoJo, which I did. Did Jodeci do it too? Almost. It's forever my life. help me. We're not going to go through their catalog. For those of you who know, if you know. Why would you choose to start singing a song first? Instead of asking? Instead, is this, is that the word? I should have whispered to it. (laughs) Jodeci song. Just jumped out there. They're like brother and sister up here, by the way. Give me a Jodeci song. But the overall lesson was, (laughs) do. She said, he's preaching. I don't need to give you a song. Man, give him a Jodeci song so you can keep going. Somebody For, scream out Jodeci song. Forever My Lady. That's about the only one that I feel oh, safe I enough saying. <laughs> Sorry, it was going to mess me up the rest of the service. Keep going. Let's go. And we're on. all together. You're back to preaching. <laughs> Here's the point. When I was broken enough <laughs> to believe more in him than the thing yeah. is when he could trust me with the thing. With the thing. Let's go. Can I trust you with your finances that you don't depend on them more than you depend on the source? Let's go. Can I trust you with my people that you don't depend on your spouse, your relationship more than you depend on the source? It's always going to be about him, and we tend to make it personal. God, it's about me. God, why did you break my heart? God, why didn't you do it for me? I thought you were going to do it, but it's about purpose. Somebody say it's bigger than me. It's bigger than me. That's That's so good. That's so good because it is ultimately about relationship with him because all of those good things come from him. Yeah. But so often we look to those things instead of looking to relationship with him. And he will continually allow us, and I say allow, because sometimes we look at waiting seasons like punishment, but he will allow us to be um, loved so well in a waiting season because all he wants is to connect us to him. If you're a parent in the room, you know all you want at the end of every day. I just want my kiddo's heart. I want their heart because if I have their heart, then I can help them in their future. And our heavenly father is the exact same same way. way. He will continually say, no, 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 turn back around, come back here. Come back here. My sweet little Daphne, our seven-year-old, was she's not there any longer, but she was She's playing with Aisha. She was she was sitting over there in worship and she she's precious. She had her little hands up and she was worshiping and she loves Asher. And so I noticed her little head was turning to the side and she kept her little hands up, but she just kept looking over at Asher. And I just put my little hand on her little head and I just turned it right back. <laughs> right back forward. And she very quickly shifted back to, oh yeah, yeah, worship, worship. But the Lord sometimes does that to us in the waiting season. Because sometimes he says, no, 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 you need to focus a little bit more. So hang on. That's so good. Because you need to focus on me. So that you don't lose sight. Because y'all, a blessing is so, so fleeting when all you see it as is the thing. Like you were talking about. But it's a choice. At the end of the day, it's John 15, 5. It's he's the vine, we're the branches. And then this question is asked. It says, if you stay connected to him and he and you, you will bear much fruit. Yeah. He's the source. A mutual friend, William McDowell, always talks about these moments in his presence. And he said, we in our humanity think that time in his presence is going to merit blessings. That time in his presence is like, Ooh, now I'm going to finally get the wisdom and the clarity and all that. Yes. The answer is Yes. Pastor William says, William McDowell says, it is a bonus. The blessings is a bonus because you're his kids. The reward of all of those moments is his presence, is that we have access to the vine. 
we're the branches, and if we stay connected to him, then what happens is when comparison and traps of the enemy and things that are contending for our attention starts to try to distract us, the Lord can redirect us right back to him as the source. Look at the person next to you and say, this whole thing is for you. I feel it in my spirit. I wanted to jump in because I think one of the major things that we fight in the generation in the world that we live in now is entitlement. Like, and it's, it's not foreign to the church. Right. We are just as spoiled as can be. Because honestly, um, Kenny was preaching a message one time and he got to this point telling that story. And he said when he got the gig, people started calling him saying, man, you deserve it. Woo. Man, you deserve that. And honestly, if we're honest with ourselves deep within, God, I deserve this husband. I deserve. And he said, God spoke to him and said, no. If I gave you what you deserved, yeah, yeah, yeah. woo! Yikes. Uh-oh. And we approach the blessing, the promise, uh-huh. and what we expect from God with the sense of entitlement. Yikes. We're not saying, God, honestly, you are the prize, right. and everything else yeah. is just added blessing. It's just bonus. Instead, we approach it like, oh, I deserve this. I went to school for this. I've been good enough for this. And God is saying, no, if I gave you what you deserved. Yeah. Huh, I just really, really sense that because sometimes we're approaching the promise as if it, this belongs to me. This, yeah. is, this is something I deserve. That's entitlement. It is. That we have to fight daily to, to, to rid ourselves of yeah. because of the culture that we live in. Yeah. You know, this culture says, hey, you're supposed to have that. Go ahead and right. get it, you know? And we want everything in our own timing. We want everything. Everything is instant gratification. Yeah. Everything is microwave. One thing you can't microwave is spiritual maturity. Right. One thing you can't microwave is your relationship with the Lord. And it's not about religion. Like maybe you grew up in a religious home. Maybe it was very much a religious experience. And one thing you're going to get here is we say it all the time. It's not about religion. It's about relationship. There is a very real God who really, really loves you and wants to spend time with you. We just celebrate 19 years of marriage. And we got our stuff. You know, sometimes when you're married, sometimes you come home and it's like, oh, this is amazing. And then sometimes you come home because you both live there. You know what I mean? And so, no, but 19 years. No, I don't know what he <laughs> 19, 19 <laughs> years <clarify>. of <laughs> 19 years of marriage has taken, it's taken time. Yeah. It's taken some finesse. It's taken conversations. It's taken listening. That's so good. But it's all about spending that quality time. But this entitled side, I'm glad you talked about it. This is the only service you brought that up. It's good. I think it goes so well with, I've heard you talk about fumbling your favor, the Oof. favor of God before. Talk about that a little more. Yeah, uh, um, his timing being his kindness, God loves us too much to give us a blessing premature. And so not only is it personal, it's purpose is personal, it's protection. Wow. It's personal, it's not personal, it's protection. It's not personal, it's preparation. So the season that God uses in our waiting, he allows us to shift our perspective to say, hey, I'm using this season to prepare you to be able to handle the weight of what's to come, of the blessing. Uh-huh. There is what's called a backside to a blessing. My pastor describes it as a backside to a blessing. To whom much is given, much is required. Yes. And we're praying for much. We're praying for much, but we're not preparing for much. And the waiting season is a season of preparation that allows us to be able to handle the weight so that our nets won't break, so that we can handle the weight to be able to not fumble the favor. And so God says, I'm going to prepare you through this season. There's a season of ours that you guys can really relate to. When we were believing God for our church building, we were set up breakdown. Set up break. I mean, set up break. I'm talking, it wasn't a piano in a corner and a like mic. Like this. It was this. It was LED. It was lights. It was Pastor Daniel. I mean, it was the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I prayed and prayed, and I was like, God, if you could just take this away from us so that I don't want to put all this weight on my team. All of the team members, y'all ought to be praying, throwing your hands up right now. Come on, make some noise for all the dream team that make it happen every week. Yeah. 
It's we crazy. had to have service at 3 o'clock, so by the end of our service, it's dark outside, all of that. And I'm praying, and I'm like, God, take this away. And so here was the blessing. So when we get to closing on our building, which we did two months ago, Woo! when we closed on our building, we had a week to get our, the room ready. And so, I'm sorry, this was before we closed, but same, same idea. We had a week to get the room ready. And what happened was our team was so great at setup breakdown that in one day, they turned it around. And I was like, God, why, are you, why did you send us through that season? And he was like, trust me, it's not personal. It's not about you. It's bigger than you. I can see down the road. And there are some of you like, God, why am I going through this? Why is it that it hasn't happened yet? You promised it. And if you promise it, you're going to keep your word. Why don't you just do it now? What do I got to wait for? He's saying, I'm preparing you. And you're like, well, I don't understand. You get the Karate Kid, the wax on, wax off. And they will put up the stage, wax on, wax off. They put up the LED. Wax on, wax off. When you get your spouse or mate, you'll be able to handle the weight of it. We had, um, there was a guy I had, it's been a few years now, and I remember he was telling me that the Lord had put it in his spirit, and he was like, I'm, I'm Poe. He's like, I can't even <laughs> afford the other O and the R. Like, I'm, I'm like real broke. I'm broke as a joke. And he said, but I know that if God would provide, I just know I've told him, Lord, if you will trust me with this, I will pour into missions. I'll do all of these things. Four years later, God breathed on a business idea, and he was supernaturally over-the-top blessed. I remember coming back around and talking to him, and his answer was, yeah, I just, the truth is, if I, if I gave now like that, then it would skew, you know, I, I can't get, and he started making all these excuses because God wanted to bless him, but too much is given, much is required. Yeah. Saw him a couple years after that. He had lost majority of it. And he said in that season, he realized that he gave his word to the Lord and God kept his word with him, but he didn't follow through on it. What is God? You said something last service, Tasha. You said that you know you're anointed, but you're almost stuck in the waiting season. Can you unpack that for just a minute? Like what happens when you're anointed but waiting? Like, literally, when I think about that, I think about the story of David. We all know David was anointed as king. And right after that, God was like, all right, go back and do what you were doing. Go do your shepherd <laughs> you know, go, Yeah, go <laughs> shepherd and fight all these animals and hang out in the stinky places until I am ready to send you where I'm sending you. But what if David hadn't fought the lion? Mm. What, if, what if David wasn't prepared and wasn't shepherding the sheep? He would not know how to lead the kingdom. And so what, what he learned in that season of waiting was how to defeat the giant that nobody else could defeat. Like literally there were armed soldiers, people yeah. who had been trained, prepared for war, and they were all like afraid. Literally, here comes this little boy who's been out in the field. Like, who is this coming up against my God? He's not right. afraid of anything because he's been prepared. Yep. And there are some giants that you will face in marriage. And there are some giants that you will face when you get that business. And there are some giants that you will face when, when all of the blessings come. But have you been prepared in this season of preparation <laughs> to defeat the giant that could kill everybody else? Like, what do you do when you're anointed and waiting? You allow God to sharpen those gifts in you. It's great. You allow God to, to speak to you when it's slow. When it's like, slow. I love, I, oh, I love that, that you, you talked about you and your family. So I'll, I'll just kind of go into that. We were talking about the scripture. They that wait on, on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up. Y'all know it with wings as eagles. Yeah, Isaiah what? chapter 40, yeah. verse 31. Run and not grow weary, walk and not faint. And I was studying that scripture one day. And he, God began to talk to me about eagles. Like, eagles can literally carry 10 times more than any other bird. And I said literally, in between services, I, I YouTubed it. There's, there's videos of eagles swooping down and picking up larger animals that are like 10x yeah. their size. Ten times their size, literally. Wow. Eagles have the ability to soar above the storm. It's the only bird that can do that. Some of y'all have been studying the life of a pigeon when you should have been looking at an eagle. <laughs> an eagle. My God. Okay, That's keep going. Good, though. I don't know if you all caught that. 
They're the only bird the only one. The able only one. to go above the storm, which means they're the only bird strong enough to get through the storm yeah. and on top of it. That's incredibly significant. Keep going. Yes, and that's the strength that you gain when you wait. That's yeah. what the scripture is saying. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Then you can mount up. Yeah. Wow. We want to skip past waiting. And sometimes when God, sometimes he's gracious enough to say, I, I, oh gosh, I don't, I'm going to tell you this story real quick. <laughs> I had this car when I was in high school. I'm going to get back to the Eagle. When I was in high school, beautiful car. It was a Ford Escort, brand new, straight off the lot. Lovely. Let's go. Lovely. You know, I took care of it. As long as you, as yep. you change the oil, you was pretty good in that right. car. Car took me to college. I came home from school and I saw this beautiful. Buick LeSabre. A Suzu Trooper. Oh, okay. <laughs> you remember those? Oh, it was just shiny. It was yeah, listening, you know? And uh, it was at the buy here, pay here place. Okay. I had no clue. You know, I was spoiled. My daddy got me this car, and I was like, but daddy, I want that car. It's so shiny. It's just pretty. It's bigger. You know? <laughs> and I asked for that car. I would drive. I, I put him, my dad in the car. I said, you should go look at it. You're going to fall in love with this car. He knew. This car was a piece of junk. It was a lemon. <laughs> Went back home. They tried to talk me out of it. Tasha, I don't think you should get that car. I just, I, you know, I think you should stick with the one that you have until we can find something better. I was dying to get this car. Oh, but daddy, please give me a start. So my father allowed me for a lesson. To, he, it was permissive will. He allowed me to get this car, trade the car that was in his name to get this piece of junk just so that I can see, Tasha, sometimes the things that are shiny are not what's best for you. Well, that's a word for somebody. Like, I should have kept the Escort that is literally still running to this day. To right this day. <laughs> that car dropped me off on the side of the road before I could pull off the lot. <laughs> and here I am now stuck with this debt. That then my father being so gracious, just like Jesus, he came back and said, okay, baby, this is what daddy's going to do, but I need you to tell me what you learned in this. So daddy good. took care of it, got rid of that car, and made sure that I got the car that would take me through that next season of college for my life. But he allowed me to learn that lesson. And it was tough for him. Yeah. Sometimes God will say, man, this is tough for me to watch you go through that. That's so good. But in order for you to get this lesson... So let me get back to the eagles. All right, so, so the eagle, it says you shall run and not grow weary. There are some seasons as an entrepreneur where things are just busting open. Doors, anybody want those kind of seasons? We all pray for those seasons. Doors are swinging open. The money is coming in. We're in one of those seasons right now. We, we closed on the church on the Thursday. The very next day, we opened the store. The franchise got things just busting open. But what we don't prepare for as we're praying for the seasons of running is that there is more. it requires more of you. You got to take care of more people. You got double the employees. You have less time on your hand, less time with your family. We don't prepare for that portion of the running season. So the scripture says you'll run and not get tired. That's what I prophesy even in this room, that when the season of running happens, yeah. you don't become agitated and start popping off on your children and going off on your spouse or going off on your friends because you're so tired from running. Oh. But then there are seasons where you have to walk yeah. and not faint. And I'm an entrepreneur, and we run into those seasons, if we're honest, where it's just slow. Yeah. Nobody's calling. People aren't walking in the store like they usually do. They're not buying like they normally do. What will you do in the walking season? You will walk and not faint. So good. And, and, and recognizing the season, because there are seasons to run. There are seasons to walk. You just talked about it. We talk about our family walks. We'll take family walks. And our Daphne, she's seven, and she'll, she'll, she'll be eight, nine feet out in front of us. And we're like, Daphne, get back here. Like, I only run if I'm being chased. You know what I mean? So like, <laughs> get back here. But you know what, what happens? When we're just walking, our cadence, our timing, we're able to have conversations. We're able to pour into each other and into our kids. Have you ever tried to run, unless you're just like in runner shape, you're like, I'm training for the Boston Marathon, I do it barefoot. I don't know your life. Um, you ever try to run and have a conversation, like a real in-depth conversation? You have to recognize the season you're in because finding your cadence and recognizing that pace is a proof of maturity. 
that cadence in recognizing, okay, God, you got me in a slower season. Why? Because maybe it's this still small voice of the Lord that you need to be hearing right now in the slower season. It doesn't have to wake you up in the night and be a loud thundering voice. He may say, hey, 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 you're too busy. And you're so busy, you're getting tired. You're getting restless. So take a moment. Oh, that's so good. That's called sustaining grace. Because in that, God gives you the grace to be able to sustain the pace that he has set out before you. But you have to recognize what he says do right now. So often we look at success and we say, I want to run like that. I want to succeed like that. I even maybe feel the anointing to succeed like that. Maybe I even feel within me that God has called me to something like that. But right now he's saying, slow down. Yes. And walk with me right here for a moment. Learn my nature. Learn my voice. Learn who I am. Know who I've called you to be so that when I release you to run, you don't lose sight of me. You don't run away from me, but you know how to now run with me at my clip instead of going in whatever direction we want to go whenever we want to go. The other thing about his timing, you were, we've been talking about this all day, how his timing is his kindness. Yeah. The thing about his timing, too, when you recognize and you're staying connected to him and the vine, when you are connected in that season, uh, you keep your eyes fixed on him and less on the comparison trap. The, man, I love what God is doing through them, and I'm going to have that one day. I I love this meme I saw. It says, uh, I'm not lucky. You have no idea how much I've prayed. Like, we want to see the highlight reels, but we don't want to necessarily go through the same journey or the valley moments that others have had to go through. But here's the truth. If you are captivated by his presence, you won't be distracted by comparison if you're captivated by purpose and by his presence. And sometimes those moments happen in the slower seasons. So talk about, uh, let's talk about Asher for a minute. Oh, somebody go get him. Where's Asher? We're talking about Asher? Yeah, so uh, probably three, four years ago now, um, we we found out that I had endometriosis. And so we were struggling with, with having a baby. So we decided that we would um, go through the process of, you know, getting rid of the endometriosis for a season so that we could prepare to have a child. So we lit a long season. For a year, we actually flew from South Carolina to Houston yeah, right here. every single month to receive some injections that would clear up the endometriosis. And after that season, we decided, hey, you know, this is the promised child. This is what God said. This is his will. <laughs> and uh, we decided we're going to do IVF. You know, that's what everybody's saying. It's where we, the way we should go. And so we did the I- IVF, and we lost the baby. <laughs> and in losing the baby, that was literally one of the hardest seasons that we've ever had to go through. And, you know, I got angry with God. My faith was shattered. My heart was broken. You know, I was finding it very challenging to pray. Three days after finding out, we were supposed to be in Nashville to record an album called Royalty, and here I am thinking I'm going to be on top of the mountain releasing these worship songs for the nation. And really, that that album became a testament of the seasons that I had to walk through in life. And many of them were low seasons, but I still had to glorify the name of God. And so we we went and we recorded this album, and I said, hey, I'm just going to stay in the room. I'm not going to rehearsals. I'm not going to do this, not going to do that. And I remember the Lord said to me, I I know the place that you're in, but I want you to go down to the rehearsal. You don't have to sing. Just sit in the atmosphere. And so I went down to the the rehearsal, and they began to sing one of my songs called OMG. It's, oh, my God, look what you've done. That's what the song says. And and the Lord began to remind me of his kindness throughout the years. And though it didn't feel good in the season that I'm in, He's still the same God that brought me out five years ago, the same God that came through. And so I remember us leaving. We did that recording and went back home. I was still broken. My heart was still hurting. And I remember the Lord saying, you heard my will, but you tried to do it your way. That's a word for somebody. Sometimes sometimes we listen for his will and we agree. Yeah, that's, hey, I'm going to be a millionaire. I agree. I'm going to do this. I agree. But God is saying, but you didn't stay long enough. 
to hear my way. You ever seen those people that get a prophetic word and they lay in the floor the first five words and didn't hear the rest of it? <laughs> God is saying, you heard the will, but you didn't hear the way. And I remember my husband came in and he said, baby, you know, what about adoption? And immediately everything in me agreed. Though my heart was still broken, something about my spirit said, this is God's way. Wow. And when you do it God's way, he puts a supernatural grace on it. There was something so special about that process. Normally, I remember our agent would tell us, now sometimes this is going to take people two and three years, so I don't want to get your hope up. I don't want to get your hope up. I just want to be honest with you. But she was a praying woman, and so she would hear from God and say, hey, I want you to do this. Do that. I remember one day she called and she said um, it, was, it was between us and seven families. Um, a, a baby was being born, and they said, you know, you guys are up. She said, but I heard the Lord say to me for you guys to write a handwritten letter. I thank God for people that will surround you in a season to prophesy and pray over you and speak life into you. Yeah. I mean, that's amazing. She said, I want you to write a handwritten letter. So my husband, he sat down and he wrote this letter saying, hey, you know, this is a grace that's on our family. We're excited to receive a new child into our world. Our children are excited to receive a new sibling. This is who we're called to be. This is what we do. And um, I remember after, after she chose us out of the seven families, <laughs> and it literally was three days. We didn't tell this part. It was three days after we finished our paperwork. Came from an agency that we didn't even apply to. We don't know until this, to this day how they got our information. Wow. And, and um, she called and she said, um, the, the biological mom, she called and we were talking to her. My husband said, I have one question. Uh, what made you choose us? And she said, I was sitting down reading your letter and the baby started kicking. Wow. She said, I didn't choose you. He did. Come on, I think Asher's close. Because when you do it God's way, yeah. it's always better. It's always better. Come here, little boy. Where's Come on, my little Asher. boy? Come here, Bubba. You have to go get him. <laughs> and there he is. Come on, let's make some noise for Asher. <laughs> he looks like us, acts like us. He's our musician. Are you going to say hi? He got his drumsticks in his hand. <laughs> say hi. Say hi. Okay, no, shady baby, shady baby. <laughs> but this is what happens when you do it God's way. God's way. Oh, I love that. That's so good. And I love, I love that contrast between God's will and his way. Because you're right, we so often get the will part, and then we interpret that to what, how that's going to work out. His will, my way. Mm -hmm. His will, my way. Exactly. His will, my way. What is that, Burger King? Yeah, that's not right. a Burger King. <laughs> Have it your way. Right. It's, it's his will in his way. Yeah. I like to kind of jump back into that season, though. Um, really quick, there was something that happened that was so real, like it got real. Um, and we were broken during that season. We were hurting. Um, a lot of times when we have these panels and we discuss it, we talk about having faith in God like it's just an automatic, like somebody will slam a door in your face and you'll be like, but God said. <laughs> no, this hurt. Yeah. This broke me. I mean, it, it, you, it's not enough to say it in words. It broke me. Yeah. It broke us. Anybody ever been there where it's like, this rejection Ooh. scarred me. This hurt me. I got to be honest, right? This hurt so much, I don't even care who see the tears. I'm at the stoplight crying like, God, I thought you were going to do this for me. Again, it's not personal, it's purpose. And what, what we were blessed to be able to have is people that had intercessory faith. I call it intercessory faith. This is good, yes. It's just like when Jesus is, uh, he's ministering to the boy with the demons and his father says, God, I believe, but you got to help my unbelief. Anybody ever said, God, I know what you said. I heard what you said, but this don't look nothing like that. Nothing like that. And I believe your word because I'm supposed to believe in God and I shouldn't say I don't believe it. I'm going to be honest. You got to help the part of me that don't believe. And he blessed us with a circle of intercessory people that spoke life into yes. us, that kept yes. teaching, talking to us and telling us, hey, if he said it, you got to receive it. If you said it, believe it. He's done too much. Sometimes we got to just 
just look back and have people that can remind us of God's track record with us. He brought you through that. He paid that bill. He made that connection. And people that will speak the word of God over our lives where they will say, listen, I need you to be able to believe God. Because God's saying in this season, we can't be, uh, we can't afford to have people in our circle with low faith. Catch that. Yeah. We can't afford to have people in our circle with low faith. If I'm sick, you can't be coming around not speaking my healing. If you're not speaking my healing, I'm sorry, but you got to go. If I'm down and my faith is low, I need you to pick me up and say, remember what God said back in November of 1982. Remember when God said you were above and not beneath. Remember when you felt like you didn't know where your next meal was coming from, but Jaira showed up and he provided the next meal. Remember when you were saying, listen, I didn't have the money. I know you gave me this purpose. I know you gave me this big dream, but how am I pay for it? And he's saying, if it's my will, it's my bill. You don't have to worry about it. I'll take care of it. I'm Jaira. I'm a provider. The earth is the Lord's. My bank account is bigger than anything you can ever imagine. And I need about 200 people that believe the will of God, that believe that even if I'm low, God will send people People into my life to pick me up and continue to speak the word of God over my life. Take about 20 seconds and throw your hands up and give God a big praise for intercessory faith. Intercessory, intercessory faith. faith. This is a weekend to uh, so good. check your circle too. Check, check your, your circle. circle. Who's in your life that will speak life into you? Yeah. yeah. We talked about this today that paraplegic, the four brothers that came along and lifted him up. We don't know theologically if the, they had a long-term relationship, but they know that they took him, what we know from the word is they took him to the front door and couldn't get in where Jesus was speaking. They went to the back door, they went to the windows. They ended up breaking through the ceiling and lowering him where he was. And Jesus said, it's the faith of your friends. I love in that season, y'all, there were people in your world that were speaking uh, negativity or saying things that weren't filled with faith and you're like, There's n- you can't be in my world right now and this close in my circle if you're not gonna speak faith and speak life and prophesy healing and declare the word of God in my life. Because misery finds company. So you have to get to a point where you say, no, 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 my peace is non-negotiable. And my worship is non-negotiable. My praise to the living God is non-negotiable. So I can't go. I, I was talking to a guy the other day. <clears throat> he called and, and we were just talking. He's like, man, I'll be honest. I'm just really discouraged right now. And I said, listen, God has not brought you this far just to have only brought you this far. Right. Look at all of the victories. Look at all of the mountaintop and valley moments. Look at how much you've learned. Look at the weaponry and the tools you have now for what's next. Let him train you here so he can prepare you for there. Look at the person next to you and say, he's preparing you here preparing you for here. what's coming there. What's coming there. That's so good. In closing, what would be something that the both of you would encourage our church family listening if they're in that waiting season? How do they hold on? How do they take heart? How do they find that courage that Psalm 27, 14 says to wait for the Lord? Let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. It repeats it. So how do they really take courage the best way in that season? Um, I say this. If, if you're going to wait, wait. If you're going to wait, wait. <laughs> Sounds so simple, but it's Sounds true. so simple. Here's what I mean. Um, how, do, how do you wait? Um, when we talk about that scripture, you think, think of a waiter in a restaurant, and the waiter is serving the person that they're serving. And while they're a waiter, they are waiting on what do you need? How can I serve you? God, what do you need? What do you need from me? How do you want to use me in this season of divine availability? Paul talks about being single means you're most available to God. Maybe you're not single. God, how do you want to manage this? If you're going to wait, wait so that you be so focused on him that you don't get to focus on the the weight, the thing, that you get to focus on him. So if you're going to wait, wait. Because the waiting season doesn't have to be a wasted season. Some of the greatest seasons of our development, me when I was single and she was single, 
where we got together, even the waiting seasons where God spoke a word and said, I'm, I'm unlocking this in you. And then it wasn't two, three, four years later, we actually saw the harvest. We recognized in that season, this isn't a wasted season. Yeah. You're developing, you're refining, you're equipping, you're giving us everything that we need for what's next. That's Tasha, what's in your spirit? I just, um, I wanna pray for those who, in your waiting season, you've had some heartbreaks. You know, if, if you be honest, you don't, you don't trust a lot. You don't not let a lot of people in. And honestly, I said this in the last service, love requires vulnerability. Relationships require us to be vulnerable. And I believe that when God is, God is sending some people into our lives, or there may be some people in our lives, where, where you might have to let the walls down because God uses people to bless us. He uses people to get word to us. And I believe that God has been trying to use those people in your lives. If I'm talking to you, can you just lift your hands? And if you're around those people who you're saying, man, I've been trying to let these walls down, but I've been struggling in that area. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Father, we trust you today. We trust you. We ask now that you would give us a heart of flesh. That take us back to those seasons where we need to be healed and would you heal us to, from what broke us and, and, and give us the heart to forgive those people who hurt us so that we can move forward into the relationships that you have established for us. We say yes to your will and to your way. Would you use us for your glory today? God, would you bring the people into our lives that you have anointed to be those vessels of intercession for us? Even in the seasons when we don't know what to say and we don't know what to pray, would you surround us with the right people who say and pray what your heart desires? That's our prayer today. Even in this season of waiting, God, would you cause us to recognize those things that have been sent into our lives to sharpen our gifts? Cause us to recognize those same things that have been sent, sent into our lives to prepare us for what you have for us. That's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, can we give God praise? Come on, everybody. Well, y'all encouraged today. Can we honor the Leonards for being a part of week two? Woo! Come on.
receive that round of say, I'm getting stronger and stronger. I'm getting stronger and stronger. Come on, my, my marriage is getting stronger. My body is getting, my body is getting stronger. My mind is getting, my mind is getting stronger. My family is getting stronger and stronger. Come on, open hand and lift your hands towards heaven. God, I thank you that you have met us today. And we thank you for the power of your spirit that has been breathing in this room. This is like an Acts 2 sort of moment where we were unified together in your name. And you breathed in the room. And it says that everyone that day was filled. God, fill us. Fill us to a place of overflow. Fill us to a place, God, where we walk out unanimously in agreement that because I encountered God, I walked out stronger and stronger. Yes, no matter what has been causing you to be weary, I'm stronger and stronger. No matter what's been trying to rob you of your joy, I'm getting stronger and stronger. Come on, if you receive his strength today, will you give him praise? Come on, shout for your marriage. Shout for your family. Shout for your future marriage. Shout for your future family. Come on, shout for that breakthrough. Shout for that deliverance. Shout for that miracle in your life. Because I'm getting stronger and stronger. I'm getting stronger. Pastor Kenny, Pastor Tasha, for being with us this weekend. We love you. There we go. Let me just bless you. There we go. Piss that wig. <laughs> Listen, if you're here today, we never can leave a service without giving you an opportunity to find hope in Jesus. And what we believe here at Hope City is that according to Romans 10, Verses 9 and 10, that when you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. We are not a church that believes that all gods lead back to one God. We believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And the only way to the Father is through him. Here's the, here's the catch. This costs you no money. The only thing it costs you is a posture of surrender. It's a heart that says, there's something in my life convince, convincing me of the fact to more that there's more to life than the way I've been living it. The truth is, we in our humanity end up defaulting back to trying to do it in our own strength. So the first invitation is you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but you want to. You want to know him as your Father and your Lord. I'm going to count to three. When I hit three, if you want to give your life to Jesus for the first time, I just want you to lift up your hand and say you're talking to me, or maybe you're the second invitation, and you'd say, Pastor Daniel, Pastor Jackie, I needed this word today, and here's the truth. I've fallen away. I got caught up in the prodigal life, and today I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. I really do believe that he's just one mention of his name away from being right there again to rescue me and wrap me up in his arms with every eye closed just for a moment. If you're watching online, you can say yes to Jesus. Our team will help you, and our moderators will help you right there through our H Crew online platform. If you're in the room at any of our campuses or right here specifically at West Houston, you would say, Pastor Daniel, Pastor Jackie, yes, I want to give my life to Jesus, one, for the very first time, or maybe you're the second invitation. Two, I want to give my life again. I want to rededicate my life. You're talking about me today. I needed this word about his timing being his kindness. Three, if that's you, would you lift up your hand? You want to give your life to Jesus? I see you, my friend. You want to rededicate? I see you. I see you. And you, 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 and I see you over there, and I saw you over there, and over there. I saw you in the middle. I see you over here, and all the way back, in the very back. Come on, Hope City. Can we give God praise for every one of our friends that are saying, today is my day. I want everybody to pray this prayer with us today, our Hope City crew, everybody is going to pray, and everybody in the room, would you just pray this out loud so those who lifted their hands don't feel uncomfortable? Say this out loud. Jesus, from today on, I'm making a decision to follow after you. I repent for all my sins, all my struggles, 
Here's all of my shame. I ask for your forgiveness. Jesus, thank you for hanging on the cross, exchanging your life for mine. Even though I didn't deserve it, you did it because you said I was worth it. I believe that you are the risen Savior. I confess you as my Father, as my Savior, and as my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, Hope City. Can we